You may have been on US 31 south of Ludington and saw what you thought was just another landfill. It's the Ludington Pump Storage Facility, and it is one of the largest of its kind in the world. 9 and 10's Eric Lloyd takes us on a tour of the battery in the berm. They're hydro turbines, much like you see in the dams, but here we have to store our fuel first. You've probably driven right by the Ludington Pump Storage Facility. You just didn't know it. Traveling along US 31 in southern Mason County, it just looks like a landfill. But in fact, it's a massive man-made reservoir, fueling one of the largest hydroelectric plants in the world, co-owned by the two largest energy companies in the state, DTE and consumers. That allows us to provide power to about 1.7 million customers at full capacity. For scale, that's essentially the entire greater Grand Rapids area, producing up to 2,200 megawatts. To put it in perspective, a single megawatt is capable of, of powering you know, your typical size Meyer store. This facility is essentially one of the world's largest batteries. Consumers Energy gets its base load of energy from its coal and gas plants across the state. But when the energy demands peak above that base load, they need places like the Ludington Storage Facility to pick up the slack. In just a matter of minutes, they can open up the gates, get the water flowing through the turbines, and picking up that amount. Now, when the demand is low, like at night, they'll start pumping water back into the reservoir, getting ready for that next call. The nuclear plants are only licensed to operate at one level, maximum power, so it doesn't make sense to build out a power grid uh, using just nuclear or just coal because they don't have that flexibility to move with the load demand on the system. This plant was built 50 years ago. It took four years, 2,500 workers, and a budget of $327 million, $1.87 billion in today's money. These workers were building the biggest power plant of its kind in the world at the time in a spot perfectly suited for it. Right at the shore of Lake Michigan, you had the bluffs adjacent to the north and south that were right through here. Uh, that really gave us that opportunity for the elevation difference between Lake Michigan and our reservoir to be able to effectively generate that power. The six turbines can be used to generate power or be reversed to pump water into the reservoir, creating 15 million kilowatt hours of stored energy to be used whenever needed. So we can go from offline to a full power condition on any given unit in about six minutes. The only thing faster is solar and battery. On a daily basis, the plant is used to fill in gaps, but at times it has been crucial to surviving potential disaster as essentially the world's largest pair of jumper cables. As far west as Detroit. You can see the gridlock on all the downtown streets here. Should the power grid go dark, like we saw in August of 2003? No TV, no radio, no computer. You need power to start power plants. The pump storage plant provides that power to the grid to allow other sources of power other sources of generation to restart. And in the long term, pump storage facilities will play a key role. The investment is massive, but the payoff is undeniable. We're about 77 percent efficient, so for every 10 megawatts we use to pump the water up, we can generate about 7.7 .7 megawatts back. Energy needs are changing, as are the sources. Coal and gas are being replaced by wind and solar, but thanks to an $800 million renovation being completed soon, the Ludington Pump Storage Facility will be here powering along quietly for at least the next 50 years. Even though the power mix has changed, the pump storage support of those mixes has, has really been uh, consistent throughout the years and will continue to be true going forward. In Mason County, Eric Lloyd, 9 and 10 News.